Welcome to Ghostly. Do Bonnie and Clyde still haunt this world? <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, what's been going on in your world? Oh, well, not Bonnie and Clyde. At, well, a lot of Bonnie and Clyde. Not the ghosts yet. Yeah? but uh, <laughs> You haven't seen that? <laughs> no, but I've done... Well, on video, perhaps. Uh, well, we'll, we'll get into that, that later. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, let's see. It's been busy at work. Uh, things getting back into to gear. And uh, I finished. I'm all caught up finally on the Great British Bake Off. Oh, which, joy. Yeah. It's very exciting for me, but also sad because now I'm caught up. So I yeah. have to wait for a new season. I had kind of gotten behind for a few years. So I had like nice. a bunch of seasons to watch. And that was exciting. But mm. Then it's all sad. And when I hear you your, show, your show, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, it's going to have their last season. Yeah, I also need to catch up with that. Yeah. So, so do I've kind of yeah. let that let that go. It's a decent show. Now, the English baking thing, I don't know. You're weird. It's like the <laughs> best show. That's what everybody tells yes. me, and I've tried several times. You just don't let yourself get into it. I don't yeah. know. Well, I've been watching on uh, YouTube. I've been watching the Sims um, 100 Baby Challenge. Ah. So it's BuzzFeed. Okay. Uh, and it's this girl that um, she's single, so they thought it would be funny for her to try it in The Sims 4. Mm. And I've been playing The Sims 4 because of that. You get obsessed. I do, and I cheat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she doesn't cheat. There's a bunch of rules to the 100 Baby Challenge. Right. So, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, I find it hilarious. <laughs> um, she's got a really cool sense of humor, so... All I know is anytime I try to talk to you about anything, you're like, oh, wait, let me pause. Because <laughs> yeah. you're pretty much <laughs> always playing The Sims lately. <laughs> yeah, The Sims, that's me. So also for me, there's been a lot going on. Uh, like, you know, I've been planning for another year at C2E2. I'm going to say that's a we thing. We, I mean, yes. you a little bit more. Yeah. But. I've been planning it out. Um, Bob After Dark actually created a joint fan meetup. For yeah. Bob After Dark and Ghostly fans. This is so exciting. I, it I, is. I, I'm really uh, looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to see 2 2 in general, but I'm looking forward to having our own fan meetup. Yeah. So if you're if you're in the Chicagoland area, uh, you don't even have to pay for tickets for this meetup because it's right at the fountain out in the vestibule, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful area at McCormick Very Place. Scenic. Really, really nice. And uh, yeah, it's before you actually get into the to C2E2. So, yeah. yeah, and you would still see a lot of people cosplaying and stuff. Oh yeah, and... super fun. And it's uh, it's right on the lake. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. And uh, it's going to be Saturday at 2. Yeah, so right? Saturday, February 29th. Saturday, February 29th. So leap year. So leap year. Those yeah. of you with a birthday, I mean, Yeah, we'd celebrate. love to celebrate with you. <laughs> and for this meetup, I mean, it's not going to be us like, you know, doing a show or anything. We're going to be talking to you guys because we want to meet you and we want to know what what you like and what you dislike and yeah, just hang beyond out. Ghostly even. Yeah. And speaking of that, on Facebook, Ghostly started a group for the Ghostly Society. Yes. What's the Ghostly Society? So Ghost Society is ghostly fans. Ghostly fans, Basically, yeah. Basically, uh, people that like- You know, the to, hardcore fans. The hardcore fans. Those that want to get a little deeper, maybe get some extra scoop into yeah. our research and episodes, kind of get some early preview of what's going to be happening. Yeah. It's been so much fun getting to know everyone in there. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we've known a lot of these people for a while, but- it's really it's really nice that they're interacting with each other and talking and it's like a party. It is. It, lots of stories and uh, I've I've pulled some of the best ones to maybe share as listener mail down the road. Yeah. Or, well, actually today, starting today, I've got one. But, Ooh, really? Yeah, it was that good. It was oh, just, wow. Yeah. 
Well, if you haven't found your way there, make sure to check it out. Uh, it's facebook.com slash groups slash ghostly society. That's a lot to type in. Or you could just go to our um, page, facebook.com slash ghostly podcast, and there'll be a way to enter the society from there. Oh, and uh, ghostly hit a milestone. Yeah. We officially hit 100,000 downloads. Amazing. In just over a year. Yeah, that's it's insane. Uh, we really thank every single one of you for getting the word out and letting people know that, you know, ghostly's a thing. Yeah. I mean, I, well, we hope you're enjoying the episode still and that you want to keep listening. <laughs> I mean, I would definitely say that... Um, we are probably the best paranormal podcast that debates ghost stories. Yes. So I mean, I haven't heard of another one, I, but right. <laughs> I would say we're we're probably the best at it. Yes. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this episode before we get too far in, and I forget to mention it. Okay. So Valentine's Day is quickly approaching. I have to. Stop myself from saying Valentine. Yes, you did. Ex- I was so proud of you right there. I it, it was great. Yeah, I saw I saw a post. Um, a girl posted like one of those memes that said, um, "You start dating a guy and then you realize that he says Valentines." Really? And <laughs> and then you break up with them. <laughs> and everybody was commenting like, "Yep, definitely." Wow. And I'm like, wait, I I do say that, but I'm trying to get better. I was just going to say, are you looking back over your past relationships and thinking, wait, when was the first moment they yeah. heard me say <laughs> A lot of times I, <laughs> I broke up with people right around Valentine's Day. <laughs> Tines. Tines. Yeah. And is it a Chicago thing? It's Southside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we say everything weird. Oh, gotcha. So Valentine's Day is quickly approaching. And last year we did the only ghost story that you think about when you hear St. Valentine's Day, right? The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Yes. Where you had to say that word a lot. I did. And I messed it up a lot. So go back and listen to that. <laughs> I say Valentine a lot. <laughs> I think we should change it to Valentine. It just just to be easier for me. <laughs> So I enjoyed doing that episode. Uh, how about you? Rebecca? It was a lot of fun, and that was one with Mondo, right? It was definitely that was with Mondo. one of our first ones with him, and uh, yeah, super fun. Um, we had actually gone on a tour and saw the site and everything, so a lot of fun. Yeah. So the only problem with doing such an iconic story is that you have to follow it up afterwards, right? There's got to be something for the next year. So it's a daunting task because of how much I enjoyed that episode. But I started to analyze this whole Valentine's Day concept and try to get to the core of it. So what goes into Valentine's Day? I thought of young lovers out on a date, flowers and candy, uh, White Castle. <laughs> White Castle has a White, White Castle for those that are not in the Chicagoland area and, and I think they have one in Arizona now. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are little tiny burgers that make you go potty a lot. <laughs> there, um, it's a fast food place. but It is a fast food place. It's, they turn it up. It's kind of scuzzy, but for Unreal. Valentine's Day, yeah. they actually take reservations. Yeah. And so I had called for years to find out, and they always got mad at me and, and were like, sir, you have to take this serious. <laughs> and... um. But yeah, so you go there and it's the regular, you know, menu, but uh, you have a server serving you. So just like imagine going to McDonald's, but they like have it all like decorated and then actually tablecloths and and everything. And then they come to your table and take your order for Valentine's Day. It's really cool. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so that's that's probably the core of it to me is all that makes the romance into Valentine's Day. Little burgers. Yeah, little burgers, flowers, candies, and lovers on a date. Okay. So then I thought, what if there was a famous couple that were super in love, that everybody knew about, and they died together? So what if they were ghosts? And then it hit me. Bonnie and Clyde. So I quickly looked to see if there were any ghost stories around the famous couple. And uh, there were tons, actually. Yep. So that's how we came up with the concept of Bonnie and Clyde, a Valentine's Day ghost story. Yep. And now I think this is the 
perfect choice, but I will say uh, in doing research for this, there are also many uh, tragic love story, ghost stories out there. So I think we'll so, be good for future years. Okay, good. With, with Valentine's Day. Uh, but uh, I'm excited because this, I think, is probably the biggest one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But of course, before we get into the story, we got some stuff to take care of. Mm-hmm. So, Rebecca, do we have listener mail? As I mentioned, we do. Uh, I decided to pull one from our group, our new Ghostly Society group on Facebook, just to give you a little taste of the kind of things that you might find on the group. I like tasting. So you can join that. Um, So this is from a listener, and she posted this, and I actually, it kind of generated some discussion. There was posting of um, flyers from advertisements past. So she's kind of asking a question. And so if you have any insight into this, uh, I'm sure this listener would love if you joined our group and and uh, added some information to <laughs> what she's asking about. So yeah, um, this is one of our listeners, Whitney, and here is what she wrote. Here is a weird one, and I would love an explanation if you have one, Pat. So hmm. she's calling out Pat. But I think I would also say to any of our listeners, if you have any any help for her. My mother got me several talking Bubba bears when I was little. I do not remember talking Bubba. I thought it was Buddha. No. You know, that's what I read the Uh, whole time too. And I was like, I don't know what she's talking about, but okay. (laughs) Makes a totally different kind of ghost. Yeah. So I guess this was probably, yeah, just outside of my childhood somehow. Uh, One was the bedtime Bubba. He said a few things that could be considered kind of creepy, probably to get a few nervous giggles out of kids like myself. I don't know what those are, but we'll, let that go we can let our imaginations run for some reason my mom didn't like the bedtime bubba he freaked her out where the other bears didn't and my mom liked scary movies and was not spooked easily she took the batteries out of the talking bubba after a week or so but he continued speaking now my original thought was that it was residual electricity held in the wires but it continued for a few weeks until my mom threw it away because she was so creeped out i remember it talking about being scared, or I remember her talking about being scared as she slammed the lid shut in the outside trash can. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't really have anything. Um, you know, I guess I would have to be there. I, I don't want to question her authenticity when it comes to this. Like, her memory might be different. It might have lasted for 10 minutes, but it felt like it was forever. But I don't. I don't think that that's true. I just, I don't have an explanation for it. It's ghosts. Yeah. I don't even know if it would be ghosts. Why wouldn't it be like demons or something? I, you know, yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, I, I have no it's idea. It's just weird for sure. But I really appreciated the story and I really like to hear it. Because, uh, again, I might be a skeptic, but I love a good ghost story. Especially Absolutely. when I can't figure anything out for it. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some some talk of lithium batteries, but that what but no one was sure about it. And it couldn't last that long. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, join the group, join Ghostly Society, and hear those stories. Share your own. Yeah. Remember, you can always email us. And if you have any idea of what this talking Bubba Buddha yes, is, definitely let us know. Bubba Buddha. Bubba Buddha. Bubba. There Bubba, should be a Bubba Buddha. Bubba Buddha bear. Uh, yeah, so I, I really don't know, but I really appreciate it, Whitney. Thank you for writing that. Um, sorry I couldn't give you any explanation. I know you were looking for it or trying to get one from me, but I don't have one. Uh, so we're reaching out to to our listeners. My hoping... skeptic bros, <laughs> which hoping... are both male and female. Ah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully you can share something. So again, join that that Facebook group, uh, Ghostly Society, or, um, or also remember you can email us, info at ghostlypodcast.com. Absolutely. And now to the part where I never look forward to. I guess it's time to read the polls. Now you won last time, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. So why do you know we why why do you never look forward to the polls? Sometimes you win. Mm. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I not this time. Oh, yeah. I kind of knew as soon as we came up with the idea, before I even heard ghost stories, that <laughs> I was not winning Alcatraz. <laughs> so, yes, we talked about Alcatraz, and the question was, is Alcatraz haunted? 70% say yes, and 30% say no. That was pretty close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really creepy place. If you ever go there, um, 
It's very creepy. I still don't believe it's haunted, but I understand why people would think that it is. It, it's I, I, There's just a lot of stories, a lot of people. So uh, thanks so much for voting. And remember, we will have a poll for this episode as well out on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and so If we, you make it through the whole episode, because this is going to be a long one. It is going to be a long episode, but we hope you... get some you, coffee? Yeah, right? Uh, I mean, you know, hey, if you need to take a break in the middle, come back to it the next day. That's fine. But oh, just, that's what I do with every podcast. Yeah, but just yeah. make sure that you do because there's a lot of spooky, scary coming up towards the end. So there's a little bit coming up right now. Okay, well, actually, let's just dive right into the episode then. Yeah. Since we did all of our other business, yes. let's let's get into the real, the real, the real potatoes of this mm-hmm. episode. The meat and potatoes, or did you turn vegan? I I was vegan for a second. There. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I don't have to be vegan. I could just be vegetarian. Oh, that's true. Jeez. Jeez. Always go to the extreme, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are uh, you ready for a ghost story? Yes. Are you? I am. Uh, so this one is um, definitely a fictional story, but it is based on uh, a real place that is said to be haunted by Bonnie and Clyde that I didn't really have quite time to talk about later in the episode. Um, and the details about the place are true as much as there's not the ghosty parts but the just the real parts yeah because yeah. ghost, ghostly parts aren't true well they are true but you know this story is a fictionalized thing okay all right so you ready yes okay it sounded like a fun idea jake suggested that we sneak in after midnight no one would see us and we could hang out without being interrupted plus it was rumored to be haunted and what bored teenager doesn't want to experience that We bought flashlights and, of course, some liquid courage with us. The Baker Hotel is right next to the police station. Sorry, just a super quick aside. There is a Baker Hotel that's not too far from us that is also rumored to be haunted. Mm. Like, it's just the next town over from where we're recording this right now. And I've been to a Baker Square. Yes. Yeah, where they have pie that I swear sometimes is haunted. (laughs) They just closed a bunch of Baker Square in Illinois. It's really sad. Uh, but anyways, we will maybe do that that other Baker Hotel sometime because it is where uh, Donnie Wahlberg and Jenny McCarthy got married. So, definitely ghost. Definitely ghost. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry. The Baker Hotel is right next to the police station. So this break-in was definitely the most daring the four of us had ever attempted. Sean and Tiff were, weren't scared at all. They laughed and made way too much noise. Jeff was his solid self and just kept everything moving. I was nervous, but curious. Inside, it was unbelievable. The place closed in 72. It was like a ghost town. The shoe shine stand is still there, but it has definitely seen better days. There were these wooden booths. I think those were for phones from what I've seen in movies. It was pretty dark, so we mostly just stayed in the lobby at first. Hung out, had fun. But then Sean suggested we go and try to find their room. He told us the rumor was that they had the carpet removed in front of their door so they could hear if the cops were outside. I was nervous because we didn't know our way around and it's a big place, but eventually they wore me down and we went searching. When we started going down the hallways, we were laughing, but soon we went quiet. It just seemed too quiet now, too dark, too still. It felt like we were disturbing places that hadn't seen a living soul in too many years. We turned down the hall that had the Bezos suite, and Jake whispered, You hear that? What? I whispered back. Music. Jazz. Sure enough, there was old-time jazz music playing softly somewhere nearby. Then I smelled it. Chocolate? said Sean. Yeah. Yeah. This was getting very scary, and I was about to say we needed to turn back when it happened. From out of the door to the suite came a mist, a mist that took shape into two people laughing and holding each other, dressed in old clothes. At first we all froze, the shock of, is this really happening? And then Tiff screamed and Sean yelled, run! So we did. We booked it out of there so fast. When we made it back to the park by Jake's house, we finally spoke. Was that them, I asked? Bonnie and Clyde? Jake took a moment and replied, yeah, I think it was. I've often wondered what really happened that night. Did we really see their ghosts and hear that music? Or was it just our imagination? But there were four of us, and I just don't think we could have imagined all of it. 
Lately, there's been a lot of talk about trying to renovate the baker. I just worry what that might do to all that energy inside. Hmm. Done. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> Please don't drop my mic. <laughs> no, I won't. Uh, wow, that was really good. Yeah, so that's yeah. the thing. So that hotel, there's, there's the, the music and the chocolate, all of that. That's kind of what people um, claim. Hmm. So interesting. Well, I think uh, we're already like 20 minutes into the episode. So why don't we go ahead and take a, a small break? Sounds good. All right. Hey, True Believers, it's Dr. David Hickney. That's right. I'm a legit PhD. Anyway, there's still a butt-ton of truth out there, so we're coming back for Season 3. It starts February 28th, 2020. 2020 is a leap year, so February has a 29th day. We don't dare post on that day because, as you know, leap day is the Spode's once quadrennial laundry day. It gets messy. Anywho, Freak of the Week Season 3, February 28th. Elizabeth will be there, too. Okay, so there's a lot of history for Bonnie and Clyde. And I mean, we usually only talk about one person, so there's at least double that, right? Because there's two people. Right, plus like a whole gang. There is the Barrow gang. Yeah. Or I refer to them as the Bonnie and Clyde gang because I don't really like to refer to, it doesn't feel right to call Clyde Barrow. I don't know. It makes him cooler? No, I don't I don't know what it is. It's just Sexier. a feeling. That's a feeling for me. Okay. So as always, I'm going to do my best to put this in as much chronological order as I possibly can. Stories that I've read about them, uh, they don't put it in chronological order. So it makes it really difficult. I like to actually know step by step by step. No previewing for you. No, definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. So um, because Clyde is older, we're going to start with Clyde. All right. I know everybody's here for the for Bonnie. I mean, <laughs> that's people love Bonnie. That's true. They did. So Clyde's full name was Clyde Champion Barrow. Champion. That's a nice middle name. That's huh? going to come up later. Is it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born on March 24th, 1909. So what I thought would be interesting is to have Rebecca read their characteristics of their uh, zodiac sign. Sure. So March 24th means Aries. Okay. So I looked this up um, on the Cosmo UK website. They just did uh, some stuff last year. And I like the way they do it because they kind of do like the good and the bad. So Aries. uh, So this group likes winning, getting attention and being on top, which kind of sounds like Clyde Barrow to me. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, And then some some uh, adjectives. uh, Courageous. And then it says read reckless. Definitely reckless. Yeah. Competitive. Read insecure. Okay. Honest. Read tactless. Hmm. Driven. Read uh, pressurized. Generous, Mm. read overbearing, and energetic, read exhausting. Wow. So a lot of those really ring true for for good old Clyde. I think so. Uh, He was born into what was considered a very poor family in Ellis County, Texas, which is southeast of Dallas. He was the fifth of seven children. So there was a lot of children in his family. Mm -hmm. In the 1920s, his family moved to Dallas. Uh, Actually... They were pushed out. Mm. But, you know, moving to Dallas sounds like the family was doing a little bit better with money, but in fact, just the opposite. They moved to the slums or the projects of West Dallas. Uh, They were so poor that, you're supposed to say, how poor? Uh, (laughs) How poor were they? Uh, They were so poor that when they moved, they lived under their wagon until they could save enough money to buy a tent. Wow, a tent was moving up. Yeah, that was a step up. That was their dreams, yeah. So Clyde was first arrested in 1926 at age 17 because he ran from the police when they came to talk to him about a rental car that he brought back late. You know, I don't really think about rental cars in 1926. (laughs) But um, 
less people owned cars than they do today. So, right. So you'd rent a car. Yeah. I mean, I just am like imagining, you know, like like Hertz or something or National. Yeah, right. <laughs> Enterprise. <laughs> Enterprise. <laughs> Uh, so then he got arrested with his brother, Buck. Buck is going to come up a lot in this for possession. Uh-oh. Yeah, but possession of stolen turkeys. Oh, okay. Like, you always think of drugs, but no, it was possession of stolen turkeys. Uh, this was a pattern that he continued. Uh, he was also cracking safes, robbing stores, and stealing cars. Okay. He just did everything bad mm. just to make a buck. Now, that brings us to Bonnie. Bonnie Elizabeth Parker. Her zodiac sign is Libra. She was born on October 1st, 1910. Yes. So, Libras. uh, I thought this was interesting. Libra is an air sign, whereas Aries is a fire sign. Um, So, Libra, air signs are cool, calculating, cerebral, and charming. I thought the charming was very appropriate for her. Uh, They possess a natural surface cleverness and swift humor that make them fantastic company. So descriptive words, diplomat, uh, diplomatic, read shapeshifter. She, oh, yeah, I mean, you're going to talk about her, but she was amazing at getting herself out of things. Uh, Great listener, read gossip queen. Fairness, read entitled idealist read indecisive and loves beautiful things read shallow which i'm gonna be honest from what i've heard about bonnie is like perfect for her yeah (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. and then uh the hot tip that they had in there the hot tip for hot woohoo for libra yes Mm -hmm. is uh aries so they were perfect for each other aries challenges amuses and stimulates libra and can keep up on the romance and passion front Wow. So it's kind of perfect. So Bonnie was born in Rowena, Texas. She was the middle of three children. Uh, Her father died when she was four years old. Her mother packed up the family and moved them back to their parents' home in Dallas in a suburb named Cement City because it was an industrial neighborhood. Cement City does not sound like a great place to live. Definitely not. Now, was this close to where Clyde was living? I mean, it was Dallas, I guess. So It was Dallas, so it it sort wasn't of. really... I didn't look it up on a map, but I would imagine it wasn't that far. Yeah. In her second year of high school, Bonnie met Roy Thornton. They dropped out of school and were married on September 25th, 1926. This is not where I thought this story was going. <laughs> right? I, I didn't know that she was married prior. Yeah. Uh, now, if you do the math, they got married six days before her 16th birthday. Yeah. You know, um, Bonnie definitely was that kind of person that would fall in love and drop everything for that person. Yep. So Roy was frequently absent from their marriage, though, and he got into a lot of trouble with the law. So their marriage was short-lived. In fact, Their paths never crossed again after they split in January of 1929. Now, did they stay married? They did stay married. Okay. They never. They never got officially divorced, but they never saw each other after that. Okay. Um, Bonnie returned to live with her mother. She became a waitress in Dallas, and one of her regulars was a man by the name of Ted Hinton. Uh, Remember that name. Okay. So Bonnie did have a diary when she was 18, and she wrote of her loneliness, her impatience with life in Dallas, and her love of taking pictures. So she she definitely was an artistic soul, too. Absolutely. Now we're going to talk about when Bonnie met Clyde. Ooh. So there's a couple of accounts of when Bonnie met Clyde. Uh, this is the most credible, though. It is said that they met on January 5th, 1930 at a home of one of Clyde's friends by the name of Clarence Clay at 105 Herbert Street in West Dallas. Clyde was 20 and Bonnie was 19. Bonnie was out of work at that time and she was living with a friend of hers because her friend had broken her arm. Not broke Bonnie's arm. She broke her own arm. (laughs) (laughs) Good clarification. Yeah. Clyde stopped by the girl's house while Bonnie was in the kitchen making hot chocolate. Again, 
these times I don't think of people making hot chocolate, but no, I guess that was but, a thing. Yeah, right. Uh, both of them were immediately smitten with each other. They spent a lot of time together during the next few weeks. See, this is this is the Valentine's Day story that I wanted. Yeah, they were very much in love. I mean, there are many things that you hear about their story that you're going to talk about as far as like what's true and not true. But one thing that is always very true is how much they were in love and passionate towards each other, for sure. But uh, unfortunately, their romance was interrupted because Clyde was arrested and convicted of auto theft. Grand Theft Auto? Uh, yeah, he played Grand Theft Auto <laughs> while drinking hot chocolate. Right, and after renting, renting cars. a car. <laughs> uh, Clyde was sent to Easton Prison Farm, Easton Prison Farm, in April 1930. He escaped the prison using a weapon that Bonnie had smuggled into him. So already they're breaking the law together. Mm-hmm. But he was recaptured shortly after and sent back to prison. Now I have to say. When it comes to Clyde, Clyde um, seems kind of a little slow to me. I don't know. That's just my my impression of him. Well, I think Bonnie was definitely the smarter of the two. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that either of them were all that genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They weren't like the masterminds that we think of. Right. right. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of planning <laughs> involved hmm. well we'll see i don't know maybe there's more than i than i think but yeah so this next part might be a little hard for some of you to hear so i'd be okay with you skipping ahead a little if you're sensitive to those kind of things um, maybe you wouldn't want children to hear this part either that's possible okay for those willing to stay around clyde was sexually assaulted while in prison He retaliated, though, by attacking and killing his tormentor with a lead pipe, crushing his skull. This was the first time Clyde killed anyone. But another inmate claimed responsibility, though, for the murder because he was already serving a life sentence. So it wasn't going to tack on to his... I mean, it would. They would add more years, but it wouldn't make a difference. Gotcha. Now, this was a very hard prison to be in. You had to do hard labor. And for Clyde, that wasn't really his thing, I don't think. (laughs) So he had another inmate cut off two of his toes with an axe in January of 1932. Okay, so you had mentioned this to me, and I thought you were saying for some reason that he had cut off the toes of the person he killed, which made no sense to me, and I I didn't understand. Oh my gosh, he cut off his own toes. He didn't. He had someone cut off his own toes. Two of his toes. Yeah, I'm not sure if he asked for two or one. You know? Oh, well, it'd be hard think, to yeah, aim exactly. with an axe. Oh, it, with g- an g- axe. G- 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 but that's not even the really messed up part about oh, this. Goodness. Is the really messed up part is that he was released from prison six days after that because Bonnie's mother had successfully petitioned for his release. Wow, so he didn't have to have that done. Nope. Wow. And that was probably the last time that Bonnie's mother ever really um, did anything for Clyde. <laughs> okay. I don't think she liked him very much mm. after this moment. But something changed in Clyde after prison. I mean, he did have two less toes, so eight toes. He <laughs> did walk with a limp because of that. Mm-hmm. But his sister Marie said something awful sure must have happened to him in prison because he wasn't the same person when he got out. And fellow inmate Ralph Fultz said that he watched Clyde change from a schoolboy to a rattlesnake. We're going to talk about Fultz a little bit more, too. Yeah. Yeah. So basic basic prison was not a good time for him. No. And according to John Neal Phillips, uh, Clyde's goal in life was not to gain fame or fortune from robbing banks, but to seek revenge against the Texas prison system for the abuse that he suffered while serving time. So now we're going to talk about some of those crimes. Now we have Bonnie and Clyde together doing crimes. Yeah, this is the movie version. This is yeah, like right. the, you know, like, we're taking the money. Yeah. We're going, we're in love. You know, we're, we're, we're like hot, hot bank robber couple, whatever. You're making her sound like Alpha from The Walking Dead. <laughs> what? <laughs> you find Alpha attractive? Is that no? no. Oh, I fuck. I was gonna mention that earlier that I am 
We are. I, I'm. I'm working on getting us ready for the new Walking Dead season for our podcast. But uh, that's too right. late now. Too late now. Too late right. now. Nobody will know that the new Walking Dead comes out on February 23rd, and that our uh, episode new will be episode will be a out a day or two after that. Well, the Wednesday after. Always. Wednesday after. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right but anyway so they were this is like there's the movie version and then there's the version you're about to tell us yes yes okay so in february 1932 clyde and fellow inmate fultz began a series of robberies of gas stations and stores uh they wanted to get enough money together to launch a raid on the Easton prison remember i said he just wanted revenge against against the texas um against the texas legal system prison system yeah on April 19th, Bonnie and Fultz were captured, though, so short, short-lived plan, in a failed hardware store burglary. They were trying to steal firearms. All right, so now Bonnie's in jail. Yes. Um, so actually, um, Clyde was going to be the getaway driver of that one. Oh. Uh, yeah, probably because he can't run very well because mm. of his missing toes. Maybe. But uh Yeah. So Bonnie was eventually released from prison, though, after the grand jury failed to indict her. She definitely had a way with people, and she could charm people. And nobody in those days suspected any woman of doing any wrong. Oh, yeah. They just thought she was must have been, you know, kind of persuaded by yeah. these men or the force to do it. And she was just very, very charming while there and really wanted to win them over. Yeah. Yeah. So while she was in prison, she wrote poetry to pass the time. Uh, when she got out, she reunited with Clyde. You know, they actually went a few weeks without seeing each other after she got out. Um, probably her mom probably didn't want her to get back with Clyde. Clyde's no good for her. But as soon as she saw him. Yep, exactly. Bonnie and Clyde had a few different gangs throughout their criminal career, as many would come and go, either getting put in jail or killed or... Just Whatever, left. yeah, yeah. Um, so it was always called the Barrows Gang, but I call it the Bonnie and Clyde Gang. Um, members included Clyde's older brother Marvin, which is Buck Barrow, Buck Barrow's wife Blanche Barrow, a lot of bees. Yeah, W. D. Jones, Henry Methvin, Raymond Hamilton, Joe Palmer, and Ralph Fultz. Now Buck was in prison until March 22nd, 1933, when he was granted a full pardon. Wow. Yeah. Then him and his wife Blanche went to stay with Bonnie and Clyde in a hideout that they had found in Joplin, Missouri. The story goes that um, they were trying to get Clyde to turn himself in. Oh, I hadn't heard that. For the crimes that he had done and being the getaway driver for that. They were trying to get him. That's what they said. Yeah. Of course, you know. Yeah. But um, the Bonnie and Clyde gang, starting up now, they were always constantly on the run. Yeah, so there's no rest at this point. This no. is like from this till the end. It's yeah. like go, 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 pretty always. much. Okay. Uh, the police were always on their tail. The police were always looking for them. The severity of crimes, though, really increase mm. from here on out. But they were always looking at them, you know, for petty theft or whatever they were doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a very quiet neighborhood that they lived in in Joplin, Missouri, or stayed in. And a gang of criminals aren't always that quiet, right? So they were drinking at least a case of beer a night. Uh, they were having poker games into the wee hours of the evening. Mm. And a neighbor reported the activity to the police. The police didn't know what they were up against, so they sent out five men to confront what they had suspected were bootleggers living in the garage apartment. Oh, yeah. This is prohibition. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 30s. Okay. So this did not go well for the police as, no, this wasn't prohibition because they were drinking beer. But I mean, were like they a case allowed of beer. to drink beer at this point? I don't know. You might want to look that yeah, up. Yeah, that'll be a thing. Okay. But anyways, it was still, even if it was right after, it was frowned upon by the yeah. neighbors. So this did not go well for the police, though, as two of them were shot by Clyde and um, Buck, both uh, dying eventually. One was one was a little bit longer. One was pretty instant. And the other three hid behind a tree while the Bonnie and Clyde gang took off in a car. But the gang left in such a fury 
that they left behind most of their possessions, including Buck's parole papers, tons of weapons that they had accumulated, and a poem by Bonnie, and a camera with several rolls of undeveloped film. Uh, These are the pictures that made Bonnie and Clyde famous. Yeah, so just real quick. So Buck was released early in 1933, you said it Mm -hmm. was March. Prohibition was repealed December 1933. Oh, okay. So So it could have been that it was still in place at that time. Well, bootleggers, definitely. Yeah. Well, I would would say too, yeah, I've always heard Bonnie really wanted to be famous. And like, she didn't really care how. Like infamous, famous, movie star, you know, model, singer, poet, or criminal. Yeah. Well, she was really upset though with the pictures because one of them portrayed her as having a cigar. (gasps) And... At the end, they actually kidnap some people to tell them to tell the like they're about to. Well, we'll get to that. But um, yeah, she stops these people, kidnaps them to tell them to tell everyone that she does not smoke cigars. Yeah. So, I mean, she was was definitely cared about her image. Yeah, Yeah, right, right. Uh, To the media of the day, what they saw in Bonnie and Clyde was very different than the appeal that Dillinger had. Bonnie and Clyde were young and obviously in a relationship, and probably had slept together. No. That's what, that's what the media portrayed. The media made this into a sexy crime story. Yeah. I mean, we always think that we are this like media crazy society and that, that it's new. No. like It's it, been here forever. It's been around forever. <laughs> but in this case, the media really put a spin on the story. For sure. Uh, The gang had a crime spree that went all over central United States, as far north as Minnesota. They kidnapped Dillery Darby and Sophia Stone in Ruston, Louisiana, while trying to steal Darby's car. Uh, Now, this was a thing for them. They kidnapped a a few people in their day, a lot of police, too. Oh, wow. Um, But they usually left the people... They let them go, but they left them far from home with enough money to make it back to their home safely and sometimes with a change of clothes. Wow. So they would kidnap people maybe, like you said, to share information yep. or to escape or whatever, but then they would let them go yeah. or just for fun. Yep. Okay. They, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But they always, you know, gave them a change of clothes and money and... Wow, made friends with them. Yeah, Yeah. but you got to think about it. Back in those days, there were no cell phones, so they didn't really have to worry about them calling the police right away. Right, yeah, for sure. They would be far away before they could get to a farmhouse or something to call someone. Hmm. So as the photos and stories graced every newspaper in the U.S., it made their lives a lot harder. Uh, Fame was not good for them, as they were noticed much more. They couldn't go to a motel or or a restaurant. Yeah, that's true. So they spent a lot of time sleeping in their cars. Uh, they had to steal more than one car because um, four or five people sleeping in a sleeping in one car together looks really weird. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and plus they were probably not treating the cars as nice as. Oh, I'm sure they weren't because they were stolen. <laughs> right. On June 10th, they were in a pretty bad car accident. Clyde was driving and didn't see that a bridge was under construction, and he flipped the car into a ravine. Was he using Apple Maps? Uh, Probably, yeah. (laughs) Now, sources disagree about exact details of this, but Bonnie either had her leg caught on fire or acid from the battery of the car dripped on her leg. But she had third-degree burns. Oh. Yeah. Man, I thought the toes were bad. Yeah, right. W.D. Jones, recall, this is where it gets kind of bad, too. It's a little graphic here. Okay. W.D. Jones recalled that um, she'd been burned so bad, none of us thought she was going to live. The hide on her right leg was gone. From her hip down to her ankle, I could see bone at places. Good accent. Thank you. Thank nice. you. That's what W.D. Jones sounds like to uh, me. Absolutely. Isn't it W.J. Jones? W- I mean, my name is W.D. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm part of the Barrow Gang. <laughs> Until I do bad things against him, which we're going to talk about later. Uh oh. Uh, somehow, either she hopped or she was carried from Clyde, uh, but they made it to a nearby farm where they nursed Bonnie's injuries as best that they could. This took some time 
and the gang split up. Oh, okay. They were some of the gang were tired of waiting for Bonnie, or they thought she wasn't going to recover or yeah. something. Well, okay. W. D. Jones thought yeah, she was going right? to die. Okay. So and many no the, doctor here. Uh, probably not. Yeah, I, I not that I you recall. Couldn't right? I mean, if you're famous, and kept, I don't know, you know how much a doctor would have done any good. Yeah. Because I mean, the skin was pretty much removed from her right leg. Yeah. Uh, many of the gang got caught, in, including W. D. Jones. Right. Uh, he made several confessions, though, uh, to get out of prison himself, leading to murder charges in Bonnie and Clyde. They were believed to have killed 13 people. So th- were these people killed, like, in robberies or in trying to escape from robberies? Is they're, that where the murders happened? Usually. They're, or, like, they were stealing their car or something like that. Okay. So, yeah, it was always, you know, they were... They were unfortunate victims of the crime. Wow. So it's just really weird to think that like sometimes they were not hesitant at all to kill people to get what they needed, but then they would kidnap people and then let them go. And like, so how terrifying, like if you have an encounter with Body and Clyde, you might make it out, you might not. Well, I think that, I don't think that they set out to kill anyone. I think they set out to rob banks, to... Uh, Not just rob banks, but rob stores, steal cars, do that kind of stuff. And if you just so happen to get caught in the middle of that, sorry, you know, you're going to be gone. If they believe that you're not going to you're not going to cause them too much harm, they would they were going to let you free. So if you came out with a gun, they're going to have to kill you. Wow. If you, you know, are going to report this to the authorities, they're probably going to kill you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But movies and TV have tended to portray Bonnie and Clyde as habitual bank robbers who terrorized financial institutions throughout the Midwest and the South. This is far from the case. In the four active years of the Barrow Gang, or the Bonnie and Clyde Gang, they robbed less than 15 banks, some of them more than once. So, like, if we compare that to Dillinger or some of the other really popular uh, mobsters... Yeah. Or bank robbers of the time. Maybe Dillinger's not the best example, but other ones. Then that, like, that's not that many. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Yeah. And in fact, Bonnie and Clyde brought about a lot of changes in finance, financial institutions that made it harder for people to rob banks. Oh, so, interesting. you know, you think of all these people robbing trains, robbing banks, robbing all these things back then that just don't seem to happen that often now. Yeah. Um, like they have alarms and stuff now underneath the desk that are secret. You know, it's it's a little bit harder for people to rob banks nowadays, so they don't do it. Gotcha. I mean, it does happen, but certainly less frequently. Yeah. But as you said to me that they weren't especially good at robbing banks. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they were horrible, but I mean, it's not like they were pulling in like millions, big yeah. piles of money. I mean, yeah. it was. Yeah. But the thing is, is that they they never got caught robbing a bank. Yeah, I mean, in that case, they were escape artists, yeah, I would say. Were. They just managed to somehow weasel out. <laughs> yeah. So on January 16th, 1934, Clyde orchestrated the escape of Hamilton, um, Methvin, and several others in the Easton breakout. This is what eventually did him in. This um, really pissed off some people. Okay. I mean, now that's the prison, right, that Clyde yeah. had been in, that he was very anti- he yeah. wanted to get back at that prison. And the whole prison uh, system. system. Okay. So he had no problem with that. But this set off a series of events that turned the nation against the romantic couple. Okay, right. Because before this, it was kind of like, hey, it's the Depression. It's this couple. Yeah. They're going around. They're doing fun, whatever. I mean, not that I'm sure everyone liked them, but there was a bit of more, I don't know, pleasure in kind of seeing them and what they were doing. Yeah, people would go to the theater and beforehand there would be a short clip of Bonnie and Clyde doing this and doing that. Yeah. And people loved that kind of stuff. Yeah, They were really into it. Okay. So um, Joe Palmer, one of the gang, during the escape shot Major Joe Croson. Croson died a few days later. This was what urged the Texas and federal government to issue a manhunt for Bonnie and Clyde. Now, they weren't just bank robbers. They were murderers. Well, and they, well, they had maybe murdered some people, but this was murdering a police officer. And, well, they had murdered a few police officers Mm. before that, but this was something that 
Uh, he was a high-ranking official. Major, you said. Yeah. Major, yeah. So, you know, and also, to it, it really it had to do with the media picking up the stories. Yeah. So the Texas Department of Corrections contacted former Texas Ranger Captain Frank Hammer, and they persuaded him to lead the manhunt. Uh, he was constantly on them until the end. So this is that movie that your uh, someone contacted you about mm-hmm. on the or TV show or something. Yeah. The, the highway, highway, highway men. Yeah. Uh, Woody Harrelson, I think, oh, okay. plays him. Okay. Or or it's Kevin Costner. I don't know. He but, does kind of look like both of them, actually. Yeah. yeah. So one of them was a. But I guess he was like a tracker. Yeah, he this was. Guy. Like he, he was. was like, like he knew how to figure you out. Oh and yeah, like he was master. At yeah, that. people people feared him. Yeah. Criminals feared him. But he was fair. Yeah. From what I've read. Well, he was fair to what he thought was right. That's true. Which wasn't always what was right. There you go. He didn't always follow the law. Ah, I yeah. see. Uh, so Clyde and Methvin killed two highway patrolmen near Grapeville, Texas, now South Lake. Uh, an eyewitness account said that Bonnie and Clyde fired the fatal shots, and this got out in the media. Mm. So the media had played up that Bonnie and Clyde were good-hearted people that just so happened to rob banks, uh, that they were fun, that they were that they were enticing. And like it was almost like a Robin Hoody kind of thing or something. Almost, yeah. yeah. But they were always good to people. That's what they said. People that they encountered. Uh, kidnapping someone, but then they gave them clean change of clothes and enough money to get home for wherever they left them. Now the nation was forced to see them as hardened criminals. And they never believed that Bonnie would kill someone. This was what changed that idea. This is the whole concept here. These accounts were not only reported in the newspapers, but the newspapers grossly exaggerated the facts. Yeah, once the media turns on you. Absolutely. One person said that they saw Clyde laugh as one of his victim's heads hit the ground after he shot them. I don't think that that would have happened because I don't think he would have had time. (laughs) <laughs> Probably not, but it's definitely one of those things you can't take for sure. Yeah, definitely. So the people turned on Bonnie and Clyde right away and protested and spoke with officials pleading for the extermination of the Bonnie and Clyde gang. Wow. So the highway patrol boss offered $1,000 for the dead bodies of the Grapevine Slayers. Not their capture, but their bodies. That sounds very Texas. Yeah. I Tex- mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> old time Texas. We'll go there. Yeah. Texas Governor Ma Ferguson added another $500 for each of the two killers. This is the first time that Bonnie actually had a price tag on her head. Wow. I mean, I do, it is surprising that they would mess with Texas. I'm going to be honest. Like, if there's a state that's going to, like, take you down if you're messing with the people, yeah. it's going to be Texas. Sure. Texas officers Hammer, Hinton, Elkhorn and BM Manny Galt and Louisiana officer Henderson and Prentice Morrill Oakley formed a posse. They began tracking them on February 12th, 1934. Do we call them posses anymore? If you're in Texas, you do. Oh, okay. On May 21st, the four posse members from Texas were in Shreveport when they learned that Bonnie and Clyde were going to Beanville Parish that evening with Methvin. And the full posse set up an ambush on Highway 154 south of Gibbsland. Hinton recounted that their group was in place by 9 p.m. They waited the whole of the next day with no sign of anything. And in fact, they kept waiting till the, the following morning. So they were out there for like a day and a half just waiting for him. Wow. On May 23rd, the posse was concealed in the bushes and they were getting ready to call it. But at around 9.15 a.m., they heard a car approaching at very high speeds. The lawmen opened fire, shooting around 130 rounds into the car. One bullet from Oakley struck Clyde in the head. He was instantly killed. Hinton reported hearing Bonnie scream out when she realized that Clyde was dead. The officers kept firing, though, and killed Bonnie. Researchers said that Bonnie and Clyde were shot more than 50 times each. Officially, the 1934 report by parish coroner Dr. J.L. Wade listed 17 separate entrance wounds on Barrow's body and 26 on that of Parker. 
uh, including several headshots on each, and one that had snapped Barrow's spinal column. She was still wearing Roy Thornton's wedding ring when she died. Wow. Yeah. So she, because she never got divorced, she yeah. just kept wearing the ring. Um, Thornton was in prison when he heard of her death. He commented, I'm glad they went out like that. It's much better than being caught. Wow. So just like with Dillinger, a crowd soon soon gathered. This is where it gets really kind of weird. A crowd soon gathered at the spot. They took souvenirs. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like Dillinger, you know, they wanted, they, they were like putting handkerchiefs in the blood and stuff. But one woman even cut off bloody locks of Bonnie's hair. Wow. While one man tried to cut off Clyde's trigger finger. Dang. So Bonnie and Clyde had wished to be buried side by side, but the Parker family wouldn't allow it. Her mother wanted to grant her her final wish to be brought home. That's what she assumed was her final wish. Mm. But the mobs surrounding the Parker home made that impossible. More than 20,000 people attended Bonnie's funeral, and her family had a hard time even reaching the gravesite. Wow. Pretty Boy Floyd and John Dillinger allegedly sent flowers. Huh. But the Dallas City Newsboys sent the biggest arrangement. The death of Bonnie and Clyde sold a half a million newspapers. Oh, that's so sad. Right? Bonnie was buried in Fish Trap Cemetery. That sounds like a horrible cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, although she was moved in 1945 to the new Crown Hill Cemetery in Dallas. Uh, Clyde had a private ceremony. He was buried in Western Heights Cemetery in Dallas next to his brother Marvin. Remember Buck? Yeah. Oh, so he was dead at this point. Wow. So some weird stuff that went on with this story, though. Ted Hinton... Remember uh, I said that that was Bonnie's regular customer when she was a waitress in Dallas? Mm-hmm. He eventually joined the Dallas Sheriff Department and served as the youngest member of the posse that killed Bonnie and Clyde. So the Hinton that I talk about is that Hinton. Wow. And so since he was, the, did he, I'm assuming he gave an interview at some point and like Several. gave a lot of those details. Several. Wow. That's so crazy. Yeah. And in another bit of irony, this is really crazy. Darby? You know, the man that they kidnapped when stealing his car was actually one of their undertakers. Oh, wow. Hmm. Now... They they made an impression on a lot of people, I guess. Absolutely. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but Bonnie wrote a lot of poetry. You did mention this when she was in jail and I'm sure even after. Yeah. Yeah. So... Here is a poem, The Story of Bonnie and Clyde, written by Bonnie Parker in 1934 and read to you today by one Rebecca Rivers. The Story of Bonnie and Clyde. You've read the story of Jesse James, of how he lived and died. If you're still in need of something to read, here's the story of Bonnie and Clyde. Now, Bonnie and Clyde are the Barrow Gang. I'm sure you all have read how they rob and steal, and those who squeal are usually found dying or dead. There's lots of untruths to these write-ups. They're not so ruthless as that. Their nature is raw. They hate all the law, the stool pigeons, spotters, and rats. They call them cold-blooded killers. They say they are heartless and mean. But I say this with pride, that once I knew Clyde, when he was honest, upright, and clean. But the law is fooled around, kept taking him down and locking him up in a cell, Till he said to me, I'll never be free, so I'll meet a few of them in hell. The road was so dimly lighted, there were no highway signs to guide, but they made up their minds, if all roads were blind, they wouldn't give up till they died. The road gets dimmer and dimmer, sometimes you can hardly see, but it's fight man to man, and do all you can, for they know they can never be free. From heartbreak, some people have suffered. From weariness, some people have died. But take it all in all, our troubles are small, so we get like Bonnie and Clyde. If a policeman is killed in Dallas, and they have no clue or guide, if they can't find a fiend, they just wipe their slate clean and hand it on Bonnie and Clyde. There's two crimes committed in America not accredited to the borough mob. 
They had no hand in the kidnapped demand, nor the Kansas City Depot job. A newsboy once said to his buddy, I wish old Clyde would get jumped. In these awful hard times, we'd make a few dimes if five or six, six cops would get bumped. The police haven't got the report yet, but Clyde called me up today. He said, don't start any fights. We aren't working nights. We're joining the NRA. From Irving to West Dallas Viaduct, it's known as the Great Divide, where the women are kin and the men are men, and they won't stool on Bonnie or Clyde. If they try to act like citizens and rent them a nice little flat, about the third night, they're invited to fight by a sub-gun's rat-tat-tat. They don't think they're too tough or desperate. They know that the law always wins. They've been shot at before, but they do not ignore that death is the wages of sin. Some day they'll go down together, and they'll bury them side by side. To few it'll be grief, to the law relief, but it's death for Bonnie and Clyde. Wow, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, so, you know, they knew that they were going to die. They yeah. knew that they were going to go out fighting. That was that was their wish. I mean, you can, from that, and I, I think I heard this too, it's like for Clyde, I mean, he's one of those kids that just grew up, I mean, obviously did a lot of, you know, maybe outside the law kid things with the turkeys or whatever, but just always was on the wrong side of the law, ended up being in jail and just had horrible things happen to him. And I think just yeah. decided I'm never going to be able to just have a normal life. So I might as well just go out in a blaze. But I wonder what came first. Um, was it that he didn't respect the law and then... You know, if you're a police officer and you know that this person doesn't doesn't respect the law, you treat them differently. True. So I wonder I wonder what came first. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, I think he definitely he and his brothers, at least a lot of them were were not good eggs no, <laughs> in a lot not. of ways. But I don't know. It's a sad story. Um, but definitely, again, through it all, they certainly were in love. Definitely. All right. Let's go ahead and take a break. And then we will get to the great debate. Ooh, lots of ghosts. Hey, Pat, fall is in the air. Ooh, yeah, it is. Yeah, and that means cooler weather, football, football. and of course, shopping. Shopping? Yeah. Back to school shopping, starting college shopping. I got a new job shopping, new season shopping. I just like shopping, shopping. Oh, okay, okay. I get it. Change means time to get some new stuff. And I bet our listeners would like some ghostly gear. Oh, yeah. Great idea. What kind of gear are we talking about? I don't know. How about some ghostly t-shirts and sweatshirts? Yeah, and not just ones with the ghostly logo, because those those are really cool. But uh, how about also hashtag Team Believer to really show our team colors? Um, and hashtag Team Skeptic, of course. Mm. So we've got men's and women's styles and even kid and baby sizes. So cute. It is very cute. And I also added a phone case and a water bottle. Nice. <laughs> Where can our listeners get all this great ghostly gear? Mm, that's pretty easy. If you want to get ghostly gear, just go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on merchandise up at the top. Perfect. Go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on merchandise to get your great ghostly gear. All right, welcome back, and now it's time for the debate. Are you ready, Rebecca? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay, so one of the, if not the, main area that people claim to experience Bonnie and Clyde's energy is where they died. So That would make sense. That right? would make sense, right? You, you talked about uh, that right at the end of the history there. It's a wooded area in Louisiana, so not actually Texas. Um, actually, I think Bonnie and Clyde, if I remember... It was one of the first, um, and I think we maybe talked about it with Dillinger too. This is the time where people are starting to realize, like maybe interstate things need to happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. That like before, one of the reasons people get away with stuff is because you did it they in one state, state and then you go to yeah another state. But anyway, so they were in this was Louisiana. There's a marker there that marks the spot. Oh, okay. Where they died. 
So there's many reports of people feeling creepy, of course, um, but also there's many reports of mists, strange lights, and Pat's favorite, orbs and pictures mm. that people take at the site. Uh, so I just wanted to give a quote. Um, there's lots of reports of this online if you look it up. Uh, but this was a Redditor, um, you ghoster 2 k wrote uh, that he took this trip. He went to all the different sites and he, at the end, he says, a week later, I took a trip to Gibbsland, Louisiana to find the place where Bonnie and Clyde were ambushed. Fortunately, I had no trouble finding the place. I pulled over, parked and got out to take photos. Walking over to the historical marker, I noticed that it had been shot many times. The place was in the middle of the proverbial nowhere. Then I noticed something odd. The place was completely silent. There were no sounds made by birds or animals. The place gave me the creeps. I took some photos and got the heck out of there. I had the feeling I was being watched. Hmm. So what I thought was interesting with this guy is he has this whole page where he goes or whole post, I should say, where he talks about, well, I went to see this part and I went to see this part, like all these different places that they had been. But this is the only one where he mentions anything, you know, kind of creepy, supernatural, eerie, whatever. So what do you think? I don't know. If I pulled up on a spot that looked like it had a bunch of gunshots to it uh, and I knew that Bonnie and Clyde had died there, I'd probably feel that it was creepy, too. I mean, I'd feel like somebody was watching me. That's a that's a normal feeling that we get when we're creeped out. This place Mm -hmm. sounded a lot to me like Bachelor's Grove. Oh, yeah, yeah. Being in the middle of a wooded area, yeah. eerily quiet, no animals, no anything. And it really it really strikes you. You don't realize that those natural sounds until you're in a place without them and you kind of are paying attention. Mm-hmm. It, it's odd. Well, one thing I know about Bonnie and Clyde and their, uh, they've put up like landmarks for them, but people always vandalize them. Mm. And uh, in the video that you're going to talk about later, if you notice, there's a lot of leftover stuff. They mm-hmm. they go out drinking there. They do all kinds of things there, voodoo stuff. And, you know, so people are not kind to, to these memorials. Yeah, um, the marker is definitely pretty beat up, I think. Yeah, so, so yeah. I mean, I would imagine you'd get this feeling. Now, it's also outside. Outside is a great spot to get orbs because orbs can be, you know, from the sun. They can be dust on the camera. They could be a lot of things. Before you would ever say supernatural, you need to rule out lens flare, dust on the camera, um, camera malfunction, especially with cell phones. I find that there's a lot more orbs nowadays because people have cell phones, and I think that the camera doesn't process it the same way like a DSLR or a 35 millimeter camera from back in the day would. Mm. Uh, The 35 millimeter cameras back in the day would get the shadow people in them too, would get like an image like overlap from another photo. So you really have to weigh out all those things first before you could ever go supernatural. Other than Um, the fact that there's lots of them. Yeah, that's the that's the point is that there's lots of them. I mean, the, <laughs> it happens very frequently because cameras just do that. You're you're taking a picture of one moment in time and anything could obstruct that that we would not see with the eye. So when you're looking at something, you wouldn't see that the sun just hit it in just a different way or that there was a bug or something like that. You might not see that the same way that you do capturing that one moment in time. So just one response and then uh, we'll move on is just that I would say that, you know, people take pictures in a lot of places and then it's just weird that the weirdness only happens We've had listeners talk about this, like we stopped all day, took pictures, lots of places, and only in this one spot did we get weirdness in our picture. Okay, so. but think about this though: when you're when you're going out to take pictures, what do you what do you take pictures of? You take pictures of these weird things like this, like you know, hey, I went to go see Bonnie and Clyde's memorial, or I'm going to take a picture there. Mickey Those Mouse. Are, yeah. <laughs> You're going to take pictures of Mickey Mouse. I don't know. But no, you're going to you're going to definitely take pictures of these areas because you're excited to be there. So there's going to be more pictures taken of these areas, ah, which see. increase the chances of there being some kind of orbs. Um, what were some of the other things that you said? Uh, feeling creepy. Yeah, that's definitely 
I could see that. Strange Lights, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what that is because I don't know exactly. I mean, to me, that seems more like the orb. I mean, similar yeah. to the orbs and the mists. I mean, I think those all kind of fall under a similar category and especially what if you see in pictures. Especially if there's a mist coming in and then there's light behind it. You know, have you ever turned on your brights in the fog? Mm-hmm. It it looks weird, you know, and it reflects back off of the the mist. I guess so the, I'm just saying that these orbs can be a reflection of this mist. I guess I just don't know why it wouldn't be in all the pictures then. It would just, why is it just in like one of their because pictures it's just they took? One moment in time and they're looking back in all the pictures looking for these things. I mean, there it's just that one moment. Just uh, like in Batcher's Grove, you had that one picture of the red shiny object yeah. that we now believe is a Christmas ornament, which well, I had said... I had said no. It's originally. too big for that. I actually think it's a mylar balloon. Okay, well, yeah, hmm, but it's definitely not an orb. But we looked at all those pictures because it was in a creepy place. But that one was in multiple pictures. That's why I'm a little more open to it being yeah. like a physical thing. All right, so I just wanted to mention one but other. P- oh, hold on, wait, a okay. camera doesn't malfunction over many pictures. Usually, it could malfunction in one picture, or it could be because. The uh, dust on the lens got hit the light just perfectly that that one picture got the orb in it. <laughs> so the frequency of it to me doesn't doesn't change the fact that there is scientific reasoning not necessarily to do with um, supernatural. Like go to supernatural if nothing else works and if that's the easiest possible thing to believe. Like the Bubba things, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is supernatural. I don't, because I can't explain it. But I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I can't speak for it. So same same thing with this. Go to supernatural when there is no explanation. Then it makes a lot more sense. Pat doesn't like orbs. I don't like orbs. Okay. So another piece of evidence in this area that I found um, was uh, a session done by a group called Friends of Dusana. Who's Dusana? I don't, there's a, it's a check word um, and I forget exactly what it means, but um, this was posted online by Texas Hideout um, website. uh, And obviously I will have a link to this on our show notes, Um, but basically they did uh, EVP and spirit box session um, at the site that we're talking about in that okay. wooded area. So they are from Shreveport, Louisiana. All right. Uh, and they set out to capture evidence of the spirits of Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker on the 79th anniversary of their deaths. Um, so again, they use the spirit box and cameras and EVPs. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just took some time before recording this to yes. listen to those yes. EVPs. Um, to me, it's some of the clearest EVPs that I've ever heard before and spirit box voices. There's, uh, you know, they kind of ask to, uh, for names and it's, to me, very clear that it says C. Barrow and Clyde. Um, they also ask, uh, um, you know, is your energy here? And they were actually a little bit down the road at that point and it said up the road. Um there's just other weird whispers and things that happen. And to me, again, they were surprisingly clear. Okay. Well, I don't know if he ever called himself C. Barrow or Barrow. I don't know if he ever went by an initial. I think he went by Clyde. Um, so I don't know. But also, when you listen to that one in particular, it sounds like it's in the middle of a sentence, not, not like an answer to a question. It sounds like it picks up just something by chance um there is definitely someone speaking but it sounds more like a cb or something like they're picking up some cb interference or something um i didn't like a lot of things that you're saying that that they said i didn't hear i just didn't i think that you know knowing that this is what someone thinks that they said they wrote it down i think that we force ourselves to hear it like in the Stone Temple Pilot song, I can't help but hearing feeling like a ham and mustard shake because somebody brought that up to me and it's funny to me and my mind always listens for those exact words in that way. So EVPs to me are very funny because I, they're picking up some kind of radio interference or CB interference or something. It's not like they're picking up, I don't know, it's... It's an electronic thing. It's not, 
it it doesn't sound like a ghost or somebody that's dead or something like that. Like I would imagine it would sound like, of course I don't know because I've never spoken to the dead. Uh, well I have, but they've never replied to me. They've never spoke to me. I don't know. It just seems, I, I don't know. You're, you're going to have to put a link in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, make sure you check out the show notes. We always put lots of pictures in it. Uh, and um, we always link out to all of our sources where you're going to get more information. You can find that in ghostlypodcast.com. Go to episodes and find the episode you want the show notes for, and they're there. Yep. Um, I would. The only thing I would say in response is just, if it was a CB or some other radio, you think that they would just be constantly hearing that, whereas in this, it's very clear that there's a question, there's a pause, and there's an answer. And it just would be like, I mean, what are the chances that they could ask a question and then just a few seconds later, there's a clear voice talking, whether it's saying what you think it's saying or what they say it's saying or not, I guess. Uh, to me, it seems clear, but OK, maybe not. But it's just like the chances of that just seem um, big that it, I mean, if I would think if it was a CB or radio, they would hear a lot more. Well, I've talked on a CB before with people and uh, they they tend to wait for you to talk. <laughs> you know, so I know what you're saying that they can't possibly hear them. But I don't know. It just seems like it seems like I, I don't know. I, I do not believe it. If anybody has a EVP or if you're a company that manufactures EVPs, I'd like to put it to the test. Send it over and we'll do a complete review on Ghostly. There you go. And, and this was uh, a spirit box and an EVP. So it was two different pieces of equipment. We'd love to Work on both of them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you ready for the second one? Yes. Okay. So the second popular. Wait, this is like the third one, though. Well, the the this were two pieces of oh, evidence okay. for the gotcha. first one. Gotcha. Yeah. So now we're into the second spot. Okay. Uh, which is Bonnie and Clyde's car. Yes. That is definitely considered um, a haunted place for them. It's in uh, a casino, right? Well, so according to Weird Nevada, the okay. car has had an interesting history. Okay. Its original owner, Ruth Warren, who had had it stolen out of her driveway by the criminal cu- couple, sold the car for 3500 It occasionally appeared at carnivals, fairs, etc., and even at a Nevada racetrack where people could sit in it for a dollar. In 1952, it was sold for $14,500 and again in 1975 for $175,000 before being acquired in 1988 by Gary Prim for $250,000. Oh, you know, I do have something to say, though. Yeah. Is that um, both of them, both Bonnie and Clyde, had insurance policies on them and the insurance companies paid out the money. And then they decided to start putting in clauses that said that if you die because of criminal activity or something like that, oh, that we're not going to pay out anymore. Interesting. Yeah, wow. The, yeah, the actuaries figured that out. Yeah, there you go. Um, so they say that there's been, um, I just wanted to put this in here because there are no less than seven fake Bonnie mm-hmm. and Clyde death cars put on display throughout America. The Washington, D.C. National Museum of Crime and Punishment has one. Sorry, they say it's not the real one, but the one from the 1967 Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway movie. Okay. This movie car was formerly on display at the Bonnie and Clyde Ambush Museum in Giblin, Louisiana, before being sold to the D.C. Museum. There was another um, death car in Florida um, at the no longer open Tragedy and U.S. History Museum in St. Augustine. Um, but the real Bonnie and Clyde death car is on display in Prim, Nevada at Whiskey Pete's Hotel and Casino Yeah, owned by Prim Valley Resorts. That's what I had heard too. Yeah. So Bonnie and Clyde's death car is on display in the casino, as you said, along with multiple letters of authenticity for the car and Clyde's death shirt, yes. also filled with bullet holes and faded blood spatter. A hand mirror, a belt, and a beaded necklace that belong to the couple are also on display at the casino. They can be found directly on the right upon entering the casino through the main doors. So, I haven't seen it, but we should all go and check it out. Okay. Uh, while viewing the car and taking pictures, just like in the wooded area, visitors report that they get a creepy, unnatural feeling as they stand near it. Um, and again, many people who've taken photographs of the car have picked up strange anomalies in their pictures, including like seeing shapes of um, their heads. Of like people's heads inside the car. Okay, I haven't seen any of those images though. Um, but what I can say about this is, you know, you know that they died. I mean, when you look at this, you see blood on the shirt. 
Um, you see all the bullet holes. Like I've seen pictures of the car. It is, it's a mess. Um, you know, it's going to be a natural thing. We're human beings. We are in touch with, um, other human beings dying. That's something that we, we have a lot of emotion for. And emotion could definitely change the way that you feel when you see something like this. And even if you didn't like Clyde or, or Bonnie, just the idea that you're standing around history looking at this and knowing their story of their death, I don't know, it can make you feel uneasy. That uneasy feeling that to me is never going to be proof that there is any supernatural because that is the natural. That is what should be felt when you when you are presented with death. It should be an unnatural feeling to you. You yeah. know, I mean, it should be. That's just the way, and it should make you feel uneasy. So I'm sorry, I just realized we didn't do ratings for the first, for the wooded area where oh, they okay. died. What do you think? What's your, one. you give it a one. That one I'm giving an eight. Okay. Okay. So then how about for the car here? What would you we say? We didn't do the EVPs. Oh, the EVPs. I guess I was kind of putting that all together as like, is that a haunted EVP, place? I'm going to give a zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I mean, I just think that there's yeah. so many other explanations of sound versus it's just so hard to, it's just so hard for me to jump to the conclusion that no, there's a dead person talking to me because the person's dead. It's, it's, it takes a lot more for me to believe that than it does that there is some kind of malfunction with equipment or that it's picking up CBs or whatever. So zero for that one. Zero for that one. I'm going to give that one a, a seven and a half. Okay. So slightly less than some of the other things. Uh, okay. So for the car, I'm giving, um, you want me to give mine? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to give it a six okay. I'm, I'm, or even a five. Yeah. I, 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 so unnatural feelings, as I said, that, that is something that in other in other times and in other cultures they treat death differently uh i read a book about uh it was someone going becoming an embalmer and they were talking about how um you know the process goes and how much we do to make these people look like they're living still when you don't see the sunken eyes cuz they put things in their eyes to um, make them bulge out a little bit so they look like they're still there, you know, and the skin color, you know, we use embalming fluid. We do all this stuff to to hide the fact that they are dead, to make us feel more comfortable. That unnatural feeling is natural, actually, because we're confronted with death and we don't see death in its raw form very often. If you see somebody that's died and you actually... Uh, see the process, it's a lot different and it really makes you feel things. I guess for me, the idea of of ghosts and this is all about energy and spirit, which is separate from the body. So, um, you know, for me, the fact that the body, it looks different and whatever, it's just a, a different, different piece. But to me, the car part, that seems much more like, yeah, people are creeped out. Well, I mean, yeah. okay, so they're creeped out, and then there's I images sometimes. Which um, I actually couldn't find any real good images. That's the only reason yeah. I didn't share any. So that's, again, another Ima reason why I don't feel so confident. It's behind glass, one. right? Uh, well, the windows, there's windows. So again, I, yeah. it seems much more like, I mean, people take these pictures and like, don't you see the head in there? And I'm just like, I don't see anything. Yeah. So if I had found anything I thought was proof, I, I would have shared it with you. So yeah. that's why so, I'm much less on that one. I'm going to give this a zero. I mean, I feel, I, I wish that this was something more than it is. Um, but to me, it's just that we don't know how to process death properly. Yeah. Because we don't see it. Yeah. Um, all right. So the last one, last sighting. So I had mentioned um, there's really two other areas that people see Bonnie's ghost specifically. Okay, this one. Uh, one is the hotel that I kind of did yeah. my story on earlier. Um, but the other is her grave. 
So uh, there's a video that I've yes. shared with you and you've watched. Um, we've also shared that video with the Ghostly Society. Yes. So if, you, if you're part of the Ghostly Society, you can easily go and watch that, this video that we're talking mm-hmm. about. So, uh, But I will put a link in the show notes as well. Um, where, um, uh, So again, just like the other two, people report lots of strangeness and all of that. But um, specifically, there's this video of a woman walking behind this tall hedge right by her grave. Um, but there's no legs that you can like, there's a part where there's like a break in the hedge and you there's no, there's nothing. There's no, it's no one walking because there's no legs. And then, I mean, to me, it seems like her head's a bit too tall to be above the hedge. Uh, so to well, me, it seems very ghostly. Well, so I watched your video. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my video. Oh, yeah. It's a I video watched the from video, someone else. I watched the video that you sent to me. And um, <sighs> my thought is that, um, first of all, you know, we have this image of ghosts in our, in our head that these ghosts don't have legs, that they float, you know. Uh, what about if they're zombies? What about if they look different? Just like how we always think of aliens. Aliens always have to be these little green men and stuff. What about if they're, you know, the size of one cell uh, animals that are on our nails? You know, that could be aliens too. I'm just saying though that, um, and this doesn't even to me look like a, a woman per se. It could be a man. It could be a woman. It could be a squirrel on top of these bushes. <laughs> it could be a thousand other things. And also too, if this was the ghost of Bonnie, why wouldn't it be going towards them? Why is it leaving? It's just walking. It's just walking in the cemetery. Just randomly walking? Yeah. So why didn't they go up to it? My usual question. Why, why don't we because see more footage? Because it faded away before they could get there. No, they didn't notice it until afterwards. Were, well, actually, and I then, think that's true, yeah. And then afterwards, they're like, hey, look at this. This looks weird. Oh, that's Bonnie, because we were talking about Bonnie. What about if it's... What about if it's Lisa? Or what about if it's Mary? Or what about if it's something else? I mean, and also, I, I don't know if it's a woman. You don't see a womanly shape. You see a a roundish shape <laughs> that looks like it's got a face and looks like it's got some hair. But that's me drawing this conclusion that this is what it is. You know, it doesn't doesn't look like anything it it could be so many other things besides i don't know why we jumped to the conclusion that this is a ghost walking because it doesn't have legs <laughs> i don't to me it was really creepy it was one of the creepier videos that i've seen now there's a lot of more to this video of other just kind of touristy things but um or just this tr- trip that this person was on but that part uh they do a lot a lot of good zooming in so yeah. you get you get a good sight I liked the video because I liked seeing uh, Bonnie's grave site. Mm-hmm. That helped me bring, like, it helped me feel closer to the story mm-hmm. seeing that. Um, I'd love to visit it. Yeah. I'd love to take some video myself and find my own orbs and yeah. my own, you know, walking ghost zombies. Nice. And the funny thing is, is it was like a bluish grayish color, you know, like, what you would expect a ghost color to look like. It was like it so was, spot on. It was such a ghost. I'm telling it's you. Not. <laughs> All right. What's your rating then? Zero. Zero. <laughs> I'm going to give this one a six and a half. Six and a half. Okay. Yeah. It's a, I don't think it's, I'm not quite as sure as I am with the wooded area, but uh, I definitely is pretty spooky. So let's go overall. Okay. So overall. Overall, overall the, the stories that is, we've debated. Do Bonnie and Clyde still haunt this world? Either or. Right. Either or. I'm giving it a seven overall. You notice the thing, though, is that Bonnie and Clyde are not together. Not always. Stories. Well, the wooded area, I think there was a part of the EVPs. They say it's a woman's voice. They just don't. There wasn't a name given. Okay. But possibly could be her. Okay. So what was your number? I'm sorry. Seven. Seven. Okay. That's a pretty high number. I'm going to give it a one. Okay. Overall one. Okay. Um. Just because, you know, I don't I don't have all the evidence on hand, so I can't necessarily, you know, disprove it 100%, but I think it's pretty disproved. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to the closing arguments. Right. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. 
We each are given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones to keep each other honest. Although my cell phone, for some reason, you never hear it like go off, but... You have to trust me. It, it does. <laughs> Don't worry. He shows me yeah. the time counting down so I get as stressed as possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why. Just so you know. No, it's helpful. Uh, are you ready, Rebecca? I am ready as I'll ever be. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So if there were going to be two criminals that would have energy, residual energy that would last on this earth. I think Bonnie and Clyde are two of them. They had such a short, fast, destructive, uh, painful life. Bonnie was in such pain. They were both in such pain and they never had a moment's peace in the last, you know, three years of their life, short life. Um, and I know that as they were in those final moments, um, where they, they actually really thought that things were going okay and that they were, they were, they were fine. I mean, they were always so hyper vigilant about things, but you know, things were starting to come off the rails and they just got caught at the end. So to me, that area, that wooded area where they were caught, I, there's just no way that there's not energy there that's residual and causing, um, hauntings the car and these on this the the grave i'm not as sure on but man that part is all right that's your time all right. again probably because i have the um the phone open and everything it's like no you know it's time you're looking at it oh okay so well, it doesn't ring but i don't know we'll see okay are you ready i am ready okay and go so i have not prepared anything for this um but i will say that I love the story of Bonnie and Clyde, you know, because I love that old criminal mobsterish kind of thing and the rat-a-tat. I love that. But unfortunately, um, the most overwhelming evidence that was presented to me is a feeling of uneasiness around death. And that just to me, it's like that's natural, not unnatural. The EVPs, I don't know, you could listen to them. You might hear something in it, but try to listen to them without thinking of what they're supposed to be saying. I didn't hear anything, and I didn't know what they were supposed to be saying. I had to be told what they said. That, to me, doesn't mean anything. And um, the car, I don't know. It would be cool to see, but I don't think that it's any any kind of haunting going on here. I think this is the least evidence again for... See, mine, right. it goes off. Yeah, I don't know why yours does and mine doesn't. Because I'm cool. So I want to thank everyone so much for listening to this longer episode of Ghostly. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best advertisement. And also, if you could please go on iTunes and rate and review us, we would love that. Make sure that you join Ghostly Society on our Ghostly Facebook page, Ghostly Podcast. Uh, you could even do a search for Ghostly Society. It'll come up under groups. It looks very similar to our logo. Um, actually, I think it is the Ghostly Podcast logo that it, that's up there. Um, we're on Twitter as well, at Ghostly Podcast. We're on Instagram, at Ghostly Podcast. We're everywhere you want to find us. Yes. Tell us your stories. Send us your information. Yeah. Ask us your questions. We love it. And if you are listening to this on YouTube, make sure that you hit the like below and also hit that little bell by the subscribe button so that you get notified of every episode. But know also that we are a podcast. You can find us wherever you find great podcasts, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast. In fact, you could just go to ghostlypodcast.com slash find us to get a listing of like 40 something places where they could find us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure one of them is going to work for you. And we are free. We don't cost any money anywhere. So if you ever pay for us, let us know because we want to get a bit of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I also want to mention on that find us page uh, or on the contact page, which has got all the find us, right? No, Stuff it's the find us page. Find us page, yeah. Um, at the bottom there is our mailing address. We've, on all the pages. On all the pages. And you know what? If you're going somewhere, we hear all the time listeners are like, oh, I just went to see this creepy place or that place or whatever. <sighs> Please send us a postcard. I would love to get a postcard. Oh my gosh. I that would, would love it. That would we be amazing. We have not received any physical mail. No, I ghostly. know it's old school, but 
Yeah. So go go find our PO box on our um, on our website and, and send us a send us something. Yeah, and we'll be talking to you guys more about C two E two as we have one more episode that's going to be coming out on February nineteenth. Mm-hmm. And what is our episode going to be about? William Henry Harrison. Who the heck is William Henry Harrison? <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> I do. He was one of our presidents. Yes. He died after 31 days in office. That guy. Um, yeah. And so we thought, because President's Day is right around the corner, we thought to honor another great president yep. that could have been. Yep. <laughs> and uh, listener Kevin, I know you like the history and you like the presidents. Yeah. So. So we're going to keep going with this. This one, hopefully you're going to like it. (laughs) So until next time, stay ghostly. Stay ghostly. Bye.